Uh, what's the elevator pitch for Transistor? What is Transistor? Yeah, so tra Transistor is uh, is our next game from from uh, Supergiant Games. We are the team that made Bastion, and I think uh, it's it, uh, although our goal with Transistor is to create a whole new game with its own distinct identity. I think uh, from a certain point of view, it's impossible to talk about our new game without acknowledging. Uh, our first game because we would not be here if not for the success of Bastion. Um, uh, with that game, we created this like kind of weird uh, fantasy frontier world, and in Transistor's case, we wanted to see if we could make a whole new world from scratch. So it's this uh, science fiction themed action RPG. Uh, from a gameplay standpoint, we wanted to explore in like uh, sort of a more tactical, strategic direction compared to our previous work, and. Uh, I think we've been able to surprise people before with what can be done with an action RPG, and we hope to do that again with this next game. So when you guys finish Bastion, the virtuosic B uh, Bastion, how do you begin to develop the next game? What was your starting point? Yeah, um, as far as our starting point for, for Transistor, it was like uh, quite literally kind of sitting everyone down and and having a conversation about our, our, preoccup our preoccupations, like what is everyone thinking about now, and it could be anything. It could be um, anything from narrative ideas to gameplay ideas to, to technology ideas, et cetera, et cetera. And we throw all those up onto a board or into a, a Google Doc or something like that and see what common ground exists, if anything. Um, and it's, it's kind of as simple as that. And through this kind of chaotic hodgepodge of ideas, some of them start to stick. Um, and so our pre-production on this game took a pretty long time, actually, at least for us. Uh, and we we decided early on that we wanted to tell a story with like kind of particular themes, and we were interested in this like science fiction direction. And we were interested in like a more deliberate gameplay pace after having made a game uh, that that was like really action focused, uh, as in Bastion's case. Um, we also decided early on that we wanted to see if, uh, like I mentioned before, if we could like make a new world again, because that was a really fun part of Bastion. And we wanted to see if we had it in us. Um, you know, uh, it's funny because a, a common reaction from Bastion fans is like, "Can't wait for the sequel." And we're like, "Well, you know, let's see if we let's let's see if we can make something new in, instead." Because I think part of what part of why people like Bastion, I think, at least for a lot of people, is that it was kind of unexpected. We were an unheard of studio, and here's this weird game that came out of left field, and we wanted to see if we could surprise people again. I guess. So now that you guys have a second game, you have a second data point, looking at these two games, what do you think now is Supergiant's thing? What is the thing that you guys do that nobody else does? Well, uh, well, this game isn't done yet, so I think, I think it remains to be seen just yet, honestly. Um, and we do, we do sort of put it out there for other people. I, I almost feel like it's not for me to decide, but, um, but uh, to, not, to not cop out on your question, I think... Um, it's really like, I think the way in which we we combine gameplay and narrative, like we see it as something that can exist harmoniously. Like narrative does not have to fight gameplay, does not have to fight narrative. And there are certain games are, you know, very dense with cutscenes or very limited interactivity, or other games where they have no story whatsoever because they're all about the gameplay. Like we think that you could do both and that they don't have to fight. Um, so I think the way that we kind of combine, uh, like responsive gameplay with with like kind of artwork and music the particular aesthetic of our games I think is probably what what defines us at this point I think you could uh, it was something we were uh, we were very interested to see how people would take it going into PAX East when we first showed Transistor we we didn't know how how people would respond but thankfully it seemed like we we found a good balance there of like People could tell it's from us, but but yeah, again, it seems like we're on on a good track in terms of coming up with something that has its own feel to it. Was there anything different about the way that you developed Transistor or anything from Bastion? You were like, oh, first time out, iron this stuff out. Yeah, the, I think one of the big differences between um, how we're making Transistor and how we made Bastion is um, on Transistor, we had everyone on the team from the first, whereas um, Bastion started with just two people and grew to its uh, full size of seven over the course of development. This time around, we were really looking forward to having like a proper pre-production period. Um, I'm surprised I was able to say three P words in a row like that. <laughs> uh, but but uh, so a, a good example is that Gen Z, our art director, 
uh, joined Bastion like as the game was going into production. She had no pre-production time. It was like, go make assets. People ask us like, hey, you should release an art book. And we're like, the game is the artwork. We're not sitting on a bunch of concept art. Like it just doesn't exist. Um, whereas on Transistor, and that was, you know, Jen would have preferred to be able to like spend more time concepting stuff and everything. So on Transistor, we've had the benefit of that, letting more of the, letting more of the ideas stew for longer. Um, so we'll see what the result of that is. But uh, in in principle, for us, it, it, it's been a good thing of like letting the ideas kind of percolate for longer. Now Bastion is a beautiful, one of my favorite games ever. It's amazing. But as the creators, was there anything that you wanted to improve upon? Anything that you saw as lacking? The, this uh, this may this may sound uh, again like a cop out answer, but I I uh, I am re really happy to be able to say Bastion is like the game we wanted to make. There aren't things where I'm like, damn, like if only we could have done this thing. Yeah. Like our goal with Bastion was to make a like a complete feeling game with no kind of vestigial features that you know. We don't go like, man, if only we added multiplayer or something like that. It's like it was it was the game we wanted to make and we're and we're very, very glad that people liked it and, and that they, you know, bought it enough for us to be able to uh, make a new game. Um, so so that's why we with our next game it's like we're it's just a change of direction for us. It's not that that's part of why it's hard, honestly. It would have been like it would have been in some ways easier, I guess, if we just kind of like kept making stuff in, like in the same ways we made it on Bastion, but we weren't, we wanted to just go explore in this other direction and um, between the gameplay changes and the setting changes, uh, even like the, narr the narrative mode changes, those things, I don't know, to the outside observer, they may not seem like huge differences. It's another isometric action RPG, but to us, these are very big changes and, and a whole new challenges. So we just kind of want to uh, keep keep trying new stuff that way and once again make a complete feeling game that feels f fully kind of self-contained. So, um, One more interesting thing about Supergiant is that you guys have uh, a muse. You have an actor that you've tended to work with twice and who I think you even consider part of your team yeah. proper, right? Um, uh, that's an interesting decision. Why do you think more studios don't do that? Uh, well, uh, I, I think the reason more... Well, I don't know why more studios don't do it. In our case, uh, Logan Cunningham, who's the who's the narrator of Bastion and once again has has a key role in, in Transistor. He is, uh, he, his performance was integral uh, to Bastion, um, uh, just a really key part of the experience of that game. Uh, and, it, and it was really important to us that we uh, keep the team together for this next project. That's like our long-term goal is like to stick together as a team and keep making stuff for kind of for as long as we, we can because we feel like the, the creative chemistry of people on the team is 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 really the number one thing we have going for us like all of us as individual contributors i think we're all bolstered by by the people we work with and and logan was just a key part of that it wasn't like a foregone conclusion nothing about transistor was a foregone conclusion that we would like have another game with voiceover but again as we were exploring you know how we could combine uh gameplay and narrative in an in interesting way that didn't interrupt uh the play experience we're like voiceover is very effective. Uh, can we can we find a different angle on it uh, for for this new game? And we and we think we have so. So how how much is Logan a, a creative part of the team? Did he have input into his character? And yeah. uh, L Logan uh, uh, L Logan like provides uh, feedback on the game as, as much as anyone else. Uh, I I do. Um, the, the writing process is, is uh, very similar to Bastion, where I do the writing, uh, and uh, Amir, our, our studio director, who designs uh, uh, much of the game, you know, uh, he, uh, he, he kind of serves as my editor, and we pitch it over to Darren and Logan and collaborate with them on their performance. But we, we certainly, uh, like, for Logan to, like, get into the character is obviously very key. Um, and we, we're very, inter you know, I, I, I think that the Bastion narrator has this kind of, like, a, He's just kind of like iconic, dare I say, like kind of an iconic voice at this point because uh, of Logan's performance. Uh, we were interested in like a more, sort of a more subdued character um, this time. Someone whose speaking voice is closer to Logan's natural speaking voice, who sounds more like a normal person, in part because uh, his appearance is very strange. It's like, it's this voice coming from this weird sword. 
So we liked the contrast of this very weird image and like a like a regular person's voice coming from it, as opposed to in Bastion, where you know for the most part you don't see the narrator, but you hear this kind of uh, omnipresent voice. Um, yeah, that was kind of some of our thoughts. Some of our th thoughts uh, going into it. So, um, how would you, in a sentence, describe the emotional journey you wanted players to go on in Bastion versus Transistor? Oh. Uh, I uh, well. I don't want to. Give away too say, much. Yeah, I don't want to say too much. We don't uh, about about transistor. Yeah, I think like in Bastion before. It, so I'm so I'm not answering your question directly. But uh, before Bastion came out, we didn't like we told people what the premise was. It's like the world has been destroyed, and you're on a quest to save the world or whatever. And that's that's actually like a cliche. Like RPG, like every role-playing game is about saving the world, and we wanted to take that premise and do something inter interesting with it. Um, we didn't talk about what the what the story was about really before the game came out, and likewise, uh, I we want people to discover it, and that means not like sort of spoon feeding it to, to people of like this is a game about la. So I think what you get from what you played is um, it's. It, you know, the, these two characters are on are on this journey together, and and the voice coming from the transistor. Hopefully, you could tell that uh, he cares a lot about the well-being of, of Red, uh, the protagonist, and it's it's their journey through this world. So, um, we wanted Bastion to be an emotionally impactful game, if it could be, uh, and uh, we we hope likewise that in transistor that players will care about these characters and about the situation and so forth but you know that will be for others to decide how well we do we'll see